Professor Inman, first of all, congratulations to your very interesting uh, lecture on reactive arthritis here at this year's RCI in San Diego. What triggers reactive arthritis and how common is it? So it is triggered usually by a gastrointestinal infection, which would be like food poisoning, or a sexually transmitted infection, like sexually like chlamydia. So it's usually what we call genital urinary or gastrointestinal. Uh, frequency is hard to connect. We, we think that in our studies, that maybe seven or eight percent of people that get a gastrointestinal infection may develop reactive arthritis. So it's it can it's probably more common than we realize. Can you tell us a little bit about the biological mechanisms linking the antagonist infections to arthritis? Yes. Yeah, so we think that the, what the pro, the local immune response that starts in the gastrointestinal tract starts to set the stage for migration of inflammatory cells. They start out in the gastrointestinal tract, in the lamina propria, but then they migrate to the joints, like the sacroiliac joint, lower extremity joints. And so what we have, in our studies, we have found inflammatory cells that originate in the gut appear in the joints and ankylosing spondylitis. And we think that's likely to be the case in reactive arthritis. What is the first line therapy? The first line therapy is still anti-inflammatories and possibly corticosteroids, either intra-articular steroids um, or, uh, or oral steroids. We try to limit the oral steroids. And in some cases, that's all you need, uh, anti-inflammatories plus the steroids, and just being patient. But there's the second line treatment that's in, in required in, in more severe cases, and that would either be sulfasalazine or methotrexate or both. And then there's a smaller group that, that is not responding to either that one, and that group may go on to TNF inhibitors. And the, uh, the interesting little subgroup amongst that treatment plan is the, the role of antibiotics. So we, I presented a study today in which a double antibiotics, doxycycline and rifampin, were used for arth reactive arthritis after a chlamydial infection. So that's the interesting twist on that. And are there actually any new interesting studies in terms of TNF inhibitors? So there is not any formal trials of anti-TNFs of reactive arthritis. In many cases, it's self-limited. It's a difficult few weeks or months with a DMARD, but there's studies from Belgium that suggest that in, if you start a TNF inhibitor earlier, you may shorten the whole course of the arthritis. So I think we need to sort of expand the numbers that were reported from Ghent. Um, you mentioned the gut joint um, axis. Um, yes. What is the actual role of the microbiota in arthritis? Right. So we do think that uh, in a disease like ankylosing spondylitis, there's gut inflammation in perhaps in 50 or 60 percent of patients, and they're not aware of it. So we do think that uh, gut, local inflammatory response in the GI tract applies not only to reactive arthritis, but ankylosing spondylitis too. Um, where do you think will research uh, take us in the next 10 ah, years? So I think what we're doing is particularly looking at the trafficking molecules. So the, some, somehow these bad guys that are locally in, inducing inflammation in the gut and the joint are, are migrating. And the question is, can we modify that migratory pattern by being traffic cops? Are there actually any um, ac current studies yeah, available so, well, on Not that? in the reactive arthritis, but in uh, inflammatory bowel disease, um, drugs like vedolizumab that block the alpha-4 beta integrin actually are, are effective. Um, what we don't know is whether if we block the trafficking of the lymphocytes to the gut, will they help the joints or make them worse? We don't really quite know that yet. But it seems that the interdisciplinary work is very important. Totally. You need a really inf uh, infectious disease, immunology, rheumatology, and GI working together as a team. What um, are your particular highlights at this year's um, RCR? What are you looking oh, so forward for, to? Well, we're very interested in the long-term follow-up of the new biologics, uh, for example. Uh, and um, there's an interesting plenary study tomorrow about uh, withdrawing TNF inhibitors for non-radiographic axial spinal arthritis that's actually in a, in a plenary. So that's very, an interesting question about whether or not in non-radiographic axial spa, whether we can actually withdraw treatment after people are in remission. That's an important question. Okay, thank you very much for your time.